Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is an in and out tutorial for Motion 5. This time around, I'd like to talk about looping graphics. This is where you have an animated design whose last frame is nearly identical to its first frame so that when you lay the clips side by side in your timeline, it looks like a single unbroken loop. One of the greatest things about Motion 5 is that you can create looping backgrounds and publish them as effects in Final Cut 10. This is the looping background we're going to make. It's a simple animation made with a particle emitter. The tricky part is creating a seamless loop. Alright, let's get into it. I'm starting with a 1080i project at 30 frames per second and I'm going to make it 30 seconds long. Graphic loops usually need to be a little longer so it's easier to hide the loop point. I'm going to start by making a background gradient. Go to the Libraries tab in the Inspector and select the Generators category. Scroll down until you find Gradient and drag it into the Layers pane. Go ahead and label the group Background. Right now, this is nowhere near what I'm looking for, but at least it's a starting point. Hit F4 on the keyboard. That's the shortcut that takes us to the Generators tab. Twirl open the gradient. Near the bottom is a parameter called Type. Change it from Linear to Radial. This will create a circular gradient. Then go down to your arrow tool here and select the Adjust Item tool from the drop-down. This gives you an on-screen control for your gradient. Grab this end and bring it down to more or less the center of the frame. And grab the other end and drag it to the corner. In the inspector, click on the first color tag and then click on the color button to set its color. Since this is the center of our graphic, I'm going to go for a brightish orange look here. Click the last color tag and go for more of a brown color or a burnt orange. Then click in the center of this little bar to create a new tag. Change its color to almost, almost a white, maybe with a hint of yellow in it. Now, you can adjust the look of your gradient by moving these color tags or by moving these little arrows which control how the colors blend into each other. I'm going to move the center tag over to the right a bit and then pull this arrow over to make a sort of halo look. Then I'll, I'll just adjust this arrow as well to soften the gradient between the orange and the yellow. And yeah, yeah. Get it to a place where you like it. You can always come back and make changes later. Now that we have our background layer, let's turn it off for a moment while we create our particle emitter. Create a new group with Command Shift N. Label it Lights. Hit C on the keyboard to bring up the circle tool and draw a relatively small circle in the canvas. In the Properties tab of the inspector, hit this curved arrow to reset its transform properties. In the Shape tab, add a little feather to soften it up a bit. Then hit E on the keyboard to make an emitter out of your circle. And press play. Hmm, it's pretty underwhelming at the moment, but we'll get it there. In the Emitters tab, change the emitter shape from point to rectangle. Go back to your arrow tool and pick the Adjust Item tool again so that we can see the on-screen controls for our emitter. Drag out the emitter shape until it's bigger than the frame. It doesn't have to be a lot bigger. Good. Now let's work on the animation. First things first, change the arrangement from Tile to Random. This will ensure that the particles don't look like they're arranged in any kind of a pattern. Then let's drop the speed to about 40 so the particles aren't moving so fast. Go up to the birth rate and drop it down to about 10 or so. I want there to be some randomness to the number of particles that are born every second, so that's why I have the birth rate so low initially. When I crank up the birth randomness up to about 12 or 15 or something like that, the total number of particles I end up getting is always going to be more than 10 per second. This is one of those arbitrary parameters that you just tweak until you like the number of particles you're getting. And since I want my particle bursts to be random, I'm also going to want my particle deaths to be random. So make life randomness 5 or 6. Now let's address color. Change the color mode to pick from a color range. 
This will allow us to have particles with different colors. Twirl open the color range so you have access to the color and opacity of your particles. I'm going to go for a sort of red, orange, yellow look to my graphic. So I'm going to choose colors that are in this neighborhood. Select the first color tag and give it a color. I don't want the colors to be too saturated, so I'm going to go uh, about here for sort of a pale orangish color. Click on this little bar to add a new color tag and give it another color. Do this four or five times for variety. Again, these colors are completely arbitrary, but I'm going for sort of a blurry light look and I don't want my particles to completely clash with the background I created earlier. If you're worried about that, you can always turn on your background to see how the colors look together and then make changes accordingly. In my case, the colors seem to work, but the particles look kind of completely apart from the background. Go to the Properties tab of the Inspector for your emitter. Under Blend Mode, change it to Screen. This should give it a more unified look. Back in the Emitters tab, finish adding colors to your particles. Keep in mind that if you want one color to be more prominent than the others, all you have to do is make that section of color larger than the others by moving the position of the color tags. Once you have all of your colors chosen, find this checkbox for Additive Blend. This is a nice feature in particle emitters like these. When you check it on, any time two particles overlap each other in the frame, an additive blend mode is applied to those particles, creating a brightness and a transparency that looks really good for uh, light simulating particles. The more particles that overlap, the brighter the overlap becomes. The last thing I want to adjust for this particle is its opacity. When a particle is born and when it dies, it's just sort of popping on and off the frame, which is a little jarring for this kind of graphic. To give it a nice sort of fade in and fade out, I need to adjust this opacity bar that sits above the color range. Click in this bar three times to add three more opacity tags. Arrange them like so with one tag at each end and then the other two in the middle somewhere. Select the first tag and in the opacity parameter below change it to zero. Select the last tag and do the same thing. Now you have particles that begin their life with a fade in and end their life with a fade out. This gives the uh, animation a much nicer look in my opinion. Okay, great. So it may have taken us a while to tweak those first particles and kind of get them looking how we want. We're going to finish the rest of this background very, very quickly by using an easy cheat. Select the circle particle in the layers pane. Hit Command D on the keyboard to duplicate it. This is going to be the basis for our medium-sized particles, so go ahead and label them such. I'm just going to call this layer medium. Once you have more than one particle being created by an emitter, you have to select the specific cell layer if you want to see the cell controls because each particle cell can have its own animation and properties. This is actually very handy for what we're doing. In the particle cell tab of the inspector, go down to the bottom and find scale. Scale up the particles to a sort of medium circle size. Now this is actually a cool looking effect on its own, but I want my medium particles to animate separately to these small particles. To do that, click the random seed generator button. This changes the random values of where and when a particle is created thus giving the two different cells a completely different animation from each other. You can click it as often as you like for different looks, or you can even add your own numbers, but just changing this number once is enough to change the animation drastically. Go up to the birth rate and birth randomness parameters and lower them both. I don't want there to be as many medium-sized particles as small particles. Also, lower the speed to as much as half the speed of the smaller particles. And then, finally, I want these larger shapes to be more transparent than the smaller ones. So come down to the opacity bar here and select one of these white tags. Drop its opacity to 70. Do this for both of the white tags. Okay, great, we're done. We finished this particle in a fraction of the time it took us to do the first one. So um, let's do one more. Duplicate the medium cell layer 
and let's call this one large. Go to the inspector and scale up the circles even more. You can hold down shift if you want to change a value quickly. Make these particles nice and big. Hit the random seed button again to change the animation. Then lower the birth rate and randomness even more. Just make it just a couple here. Drop its speed. The big ones don't have to move much at all. And then go to the opacity tags and make their opacity only about 30% or so. All right, done. Now we have our completed animation. Turn on the background layer and see how it looks. At this point, make any changes you may want to the background gradient or to your particles. If you're happy, then we're ready to try and make this into a looping background. The way that I like to do this is with clones. Now, I'm a big fan of clone layers if you've ever watched any of my other tutorials. I use them all the time. Mostly because you can treat them like flattened animations, but they still retain a connection to the original layer. So if you go back and make changes to your particle layer, it'll update those changes in the clone. But before we can clone anything, we need to make our project temporarily longer. Click on this clock to access the duration for our project. Currently, it's set to 30 seconds. Double click on the time and change it to 35 period. The period is shorthand for seconds. Click on the clock again so that we can toggle back to our absolute time code. Then jump to the end of the project and select our lights group that contains both our emitter and our circle shape that we use to make the emitter. Hit O on the keyboard to extend all of the layers to the end. Select the emitter itself and hit K on the keyboard to clone the emitter. Select the emitter again and hit K one more time to make a second clone. We need two clones to make this loop thing work. Turn off the emitter layer. We no longer need it active. All of our animation is going to be done with the clones. Scrub to somewhere in the middle of your project, it doesn't really matter where, and hit F6 on the keyboard to bring up the timeline. In this window, select both clone layers and hit M on the keyboard to set a marker on both clips. This is sort of a visual indicator for you so that you know that at this point both layers are playing the exact same frame of animation. This is key to creating a seamless loop. Alright, select only the top layer. Hold down shift or turn on snapping with the end shortcut and then drag the clip in the timeline until the marker snaps to the first frame of the project. Now you may need to zoom in on the timeline to make sure that the marker is where it's supposed to be. Okay, looks good. Zoom back out and do the same with the other clone layer, except this time drag the layer to the right and snap the marker to the last frame in your original play range. In other words, the marker should be at the 30 second point, not the 35 second point. Zoom in here as well and make sure that the marker is on the last frame. Okay, it is. Then advance this layer one more frame to the right so that the last frame of this layer is one frame before the first frame of the layer before it. Got it? Now you will have a seamless loop. Zoom back out in your timeline and see if it plays properly. If done correctly, you should not see any hiccup in the animation as it loops from the end back to the beginning. The only thing we have left to do is to disguise the actual loop point of our animation, which is right here where the two clone layers overlap. We're going to do this with a simple fade behavior. Select the top clone, go to Behaviors, Basic Motion, Fade In, Fade Out. Change the Fade In to 0 and make the Fade Out 150 frames, which equals 5 seconds or the length of time that the two clone layers overlap. Play through your animation and make sure that it looks good and it loops correctly. This looks pretty perfect actually. Great. Click the clock again to go to your duration and reset the project duration back to 30 seconds. Okay, now for the coup de grace. Deselect any layers that you may have selected. You can do this with Command Shift A. 
go to the last frame of your project, which should be time code 2929, and hit M on the keyboard to set a timeline marker. Right click on the marker to edit it, and in the type dropdown, change it from standard to project loop end and hit OK. What this does is tell Final Cut that if you add more than 30 seconds of this clip into your Final Cut project, then it's supposed to loop the media endlessly for as long as you need it. Go up to File and select Publish Template. Give it a name. I'm calling this one Lights. Give it a category. I have a custom category that I use for things that I create, but if you've never actually published an effect to Final Cut before, you can create a new category and then give it any name you like. Then click this little checkbox that says Publish as a Final Cut Generator and hit Publish. Now at this point, you can flip over to Final Cut 10 and check out your new looping background. Okay, open up my generator's browser and there it is right here in the custom category. Drop it into your timeline and drag it out as long as you need it. Play through and enjoy your seamlessly looping background. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm Andy Neal and this has been an in and out tutorial for Motion 5.